The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome uh, to today's webinar on unique offerings in Manitoba. My name is Terry Levine. Um, and first, I want to go over today's agenda with you. So first, we'll have a presentation on the unique offerings in Manitoba by Lionel Johnson, international sales consultant to, the travel, to travel Manitoba. Then we will in entertain questions, which all attendees can access the questions function and write questions to myself and Lionel. And then finally, we will have a prize drawing. So I would like to start by introducing you to Lionel Johnston. Lionel, if you could maybe give the callers a word about yourself. Sure. Thank you, Terry. Uh, well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, as uh, Terry mentioned, my name is Lionel Johnston, and I've been with uh, Travel Manitoba for uh, well, since about 2008. And to give some background, uh, I had started off actually working in our uh, overseas and uh, U.S. markets. And I spent quite a bit of time in the U.S. for that first year and then have I've actually focused a little more overseas. And uh, Danae, my counterpart, uh, is the one that manages Canada and the U.S. And she actually is on a, a, a polar bear fam right now at uh, a lodge up outside of Churchill. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about what's going on uh, up there in a few moments. But uh, definitely uh, Danae or myself would be uh, more than pleased to answer any questions down the road and, and help you out uh, with answering customers' questions and sending people to Manitoba. So I will uh, just hop into things here. I just wanted to start off just to give everyone a, you know, a bit of a description on, on where Winnipeg and Manitoba is, you know, which I'm sure most of you are aware. But Winnipeg, as you'll notice on this screen, is uh, right in the very center of North America. So we're approximately a two to two and a half hour flight to anywhere within North America. Uh, that doesn't mean there's direct flights from, from everywhere in North America, of course but it is uh, quite easy to be able to access, which I'll get into in a few moments. And as you see there, we're at about 475 miles northwest of Minneapolis. So people driving out of the Midwest or uh, flying from anywhere in the U.S. can easily access uh, Winnipeg. Okay, so we'll just move on to the uh, next slide here. How to be able to fly to Manitoba, which is how most people are going to be coming if they're planning on heading up uh, to Churchill. Uh, there's two different options. We have, uh, well, there, there's a, a few, but the, a couple of the main ones here. First of all is Air Canada from anywhere across uh, Canada or throughout the U.S. is a, a very easy option. And WestJet also is an excellent partner of ours, and they've uh, actually just increased their service uh, out of the U.S. Um, th this past year. So that, that's another very good option. And then we have excellent uh, direct options, air options from Minneapolis, Chicago, and Denver. Uh, this isn't a you know, it doesn't have huge imports, but we have a, a brand new international airport opening uh, at, actually at the end of this month. So we're looking forward to that. One other option to be able to get to Winnipeg is by via rail. And this is a quite uh, popular option for people traveling across Canada, and they go by rail. Winnipeg actually is the only city between Toronto and Vancouver, which is a, approximately three to 4,000 miles. Uh, but we're the only city that has an extended stop during the day. So we have a five-hour layover where people are able to uh, have city tours and, and experience the Forks Market and so on. We'll talk a, a little bit about that uh, uh, down the road, though. So we're going to talk a little bit more now about uh, Manitoba. And I will give an overview, uh, as I'm doing right now, on the entire province. But really what we're going to focus on today is, is Churchill specifically, and Churchill specifically in October and November. But let's go over a few things about Manitoba quickly. We have a population of about 1.2 million people. Most are, are situated in Winnipeg, which is about a 45-minute drive north of uh, the Minnesota and North Dakota borders. Manitoba is very large, though. We're approximately two and a half times the size of Germany, with, again, only 1.2 million people. So we have lots of wide open space. But we have a lot of different types of geography, actually, from prairie, you know, farmland to the Great Lakes, um, to all the way up to the tundra up in the, uh, the Churchill area. So moving uh, forward here, actually, um, one thing I'll mention on this slide, just uh, as we move forward, is we do have 100,000 lakes in Manitoba. 
So that, that, that does open a lot of uh, water-based uh, tourism activities. But really what I want to talk about here is what makes Manitoba so unforgettable. And there's really one thing and, and two components to that one thing. So Terry, if you just go to the next slide. Really what, what makes us special and different is our accessible wildlife. So we have large uh, amounts of different types of wildlife. We're most known for the polar bear. We're, or we consider ourselves and are well known as being the polar bear capital of the world. What that means is that Manitoba is by far the best place in the world to see polar bears in their natural environment. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, but we have a lot of different types of wildlife and we have large quantities of wildlife due to our conservation uh, efforts and, and policies that we have. But the, the other important component is that, that wildlife is accessible. Manitoba is not unique in the sense that we're, have, you know, we're the only place in the world where you can see polar bears or beluga whales for that matter. But again, it is the best place to see both of those products. So there are other places in the world you can see polar bears, such as you know, northern Russia or even on an, an Arctic cruise. But you're on a ship, and the polar bear is a, a mile away. If you flip to this next slide here, Terry, you know you, you can't get this close, you know, to polar bears. And this is my now 11-year-old uh, daughter, Abby. We went up to see polar bears a couple of years ago, and uh, this is an interesting experience for me, being able to get this close to the bears in a safe setting. And I had asked the guide how far this polar bear was, and I expected him to say distance, and he ended up saying half a second. You know, a polar bears can run close to as fast as a, a racehorse. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of the polar bears in the air, which I'll mention, but also we're able to get in a, a safe and, and comfortable environment to be able to view them. And uh, I'll show you some pictures of that coming up. This next slide, I, I won't take much time with these next slides, but in summertime, you know, there's three to 5,000 beluga whales in the mouth of the Churchill River. And again, you can see beluga whales elsewhere in the world but you can't see them in the quantities that we have in Churchill. Also, we have kayak trips, and you can even actually get right in the water and snorkel with them. And if, if you notice, some of the whales are sort of turning. They actually roll over and look you right in the eye while you're snorkeling. It, it really is a, an unbelievable experience. So to the next slide, you know, this is in Riding Mountain National Park. There's, you know, a large herd of uh, bison there. The next slide, you know, we're right on the migratory path of hundreds of species of birds and, you know, just hundreds of thousands of these Canadian geese and, and lots of other uh, birds uh, to be able to view. And then fishing also, again, with 100,000 lakes. That is one of our two biggest tourism products as well. So let's uh, hop into Churchill, though. I do have this listing of our main polar bear products, and we're really going to focus on the, the first one, the polar bear safaris. And, and one of the messages I'm, I'm going to try and communicate today is to really look at it like that, that it is a polar bear or an Arctic safari, because that is really the type of experience that people are, are uh, getting in Manitoba, and safaris in other countries are, would be uh, somewhat comparable in terms of the wildlife they see and, and the experience. So let's get into the, the next slide here, which is really what Churchill is all about. And we're going to take a, a bit of time on this first slide here. This really is the most common way for people to be able to go and see polar bears uh, up in Churchill. And uh, if you notice this, uh, these vehicles here, they're called tundra vehicles or tundra buggies, but they are very large. They're heated. They have washrooms in them. All of the uh, meals are provided and tea and coffee and pop are provided for the day. So guests will leave Churchill early in the morning. They go to the launch site, and then they're on these vehicles basically until dark, and then they come back uh, to town. Just to give you some perspective of how big the bears are and how big these vehicles are, if you look at the tires on those vehicles, they're approximately five to six feet tall. So this bear, from his nose when he stands up to the ground, is about 10 feet. So if you notice that client there taking a picture, he's able to get within a foot or two of this polar bear. Again, it's a safe and a comfortable environment, and they're able to be able to see these bears in the natural environment. And really, it's like we're in the zoo, and they're coming to check us out. So it, it, it's a pretty thrilling uh, you know, and exciting experience. Uh, one great thing with both the beluga whales and the polar bears is that they're naturally curious animals and they don't have any fear of man. So this polar bear, for example, he's used to seeing these vehicles. He knows that we aren't a threat. So that's why the bears are so comfortable coming up to the vehicle to see uh, what's going on. And they check us out, and then they head off on their, their way across the, uh, the tundra. So 
Uh, there, I'll, I'll get into accommodations in a little bit here, but remember the, the pictures of these vehicles here. All right, so moving forward, we have the polar bear capital of the world, as I mentioned. Prime time for seeing polar bears is October, November. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of reasons I can get into why you'll see some in summertime, but uh, just the thing to remember is you can see them in summer, but they're, you're definitely going to see a lot in October and November. There are approximately 900 to 1,000 polar bears in the Churchill region. And in Churchill, there's only about 900 people. So it's uh, quite the, the ratio between the bears and, and the people. And again, uh, incredible opportunities to see large amounts of, of these polar bears. Uh, again, I can't really get into it in great detail in just a 30-minute webinar here, but one of the questions that you will get from time to time selling Churchill is, is people ask if they can, uh, if they're guaranteed to see polar bears. And um, I'll teach you briefly, and I can explain after the webinar, you know, how to do it in more detail. But it's very easy to explain this without actually saying you're going to guarantee anything, because with wildlife, obviously, you, you don't want to guarantee that, right? But Keep in mind this, this is a really short answer to why there's so many bears in the Churchill area in October, November. Keep in mind this, all polar bears want to do is be on the ice hunting seal. That, that's really all they want to do. So what happens is they're all along the Hudson Bay coastline throughout the summer and into the fall. But in October and November, for a number of different reasons, ice forms first in the Churchill region. So all of these hundreds of bears know that the first pl time and first place they can get on the ice to hunt is in the Churchill region. That's why they're all concentrating from the north and the south and the west. All They're all concentrating in that Churchill region, waiting for the water to freeze. And then once it, the water freezes, the bears are all gone, which is why polar bear season is generally over near the end of uh, uh, November, around November 20th or so, give or take a, a couple of days there. So we can get into that more if people are interested. But uh, again, the short answer is that there's a lot of reasons why, but there's a ton of polar bears in Churchill in October and November. So let's move on to the next uh, slide here and explain what Churchill is like. You know, and I'll, I'll touch on the accommodations here. All of the accommodations are charming, friendly, cozy, and rustic as I have here, but they're all family owned. You aren't going to find a uh, you know Ritz Carlton or a, a Fairmont or Delta or anything like that. They're family owned. They're very comfortable and uh, they're quite nice. You know, part of the charm of Churchill is that it is a small, you know, Arctic community. And, uh, you know, I find, in my experience, guests really like the fact that they can be in the grocery store and see the owner of their ho hotel or motel, and this person knows their name and greets them and, and talks to them. So it's a, a, quite a, a nice setting. All of these different accommodations, they have little lounges where people are able to, you know, have a continental breakfast or have drinks at the end of the day and tell their, their polar bear stories. Um, one thing also to keep in mind with the accommodations is that there are two different options um, for people to stay. You have the town experience where you're sp staying, pardon me, staying in town at uh, one of the uh, local hotel motels or B&Bs. And there is also another option where you can be out in a, a lodge such as the Tundra Buggy Lodge where you're actually staying on the tundra for a day, two, three, four days. And it's basically similar to a, a train where you have the, the uh, lounge car, the dining quarters, uh, sleeping quarters, and you stay out there and then do your, your uh, vehicle excursions from there. So again, we can explain more about that uh, moving on. Also, uh, all of the shops, accommodations, the restaurants are on one street. So it's very easy to, be, to get around. It is impossible to get lost. Um, but again, it is uh, quite an interesting town, and, and it does provide a lot of great experiences. It's amazing that. You can only get to Churchill by plane or by train, yet the food is incredible up there and the, the people are very warm and, and caring and uh, offer great service. So it is uh, quite surprising for people how, how good the service is there. But Churchill has a very short season and uh, they, they realize how important it is to take care of their guests. So moving forward, this is a, another important uh, topic. One of the things that we really try and focus on is to make sure that we have the right product in front of the right guests. That, obviously, you guys all do that as well, but uh, no product is is for every type of customer. Um, Canada, you know, is a, a niche on its own just because of its, you know, the the cost, you know, airfare maybe to get to Canada and the vastness of our country. 
but Churchill really, uh, you know, came up with this term, but it's a niche niche. You know, it, it really is a, a, a very small segment of people that are highly likely to, to come to Churchill, but they're quite easy to sell when you find the right people. So the, these are the types of clients that you'd want to send to, uh, to Churchill and promote it to. You know, clients that love adventure, wildlife, the outdoors, something different. You know, those people that are really looking to have a bucket list, a bucket list type experience to be able to go back on the Monday morning and, and brag to their friends and, and show all of their uh, pictures. You know, a, a great example is if you have clients that have already been to South Africa for safaris or they've been to Antarctica or you know, uh, Northern Europe for Northern Lights, those are the ideal clients to be able to, to promote uh, Churchill to. You know, just because someone's coming to Canada and they're going to Niagara Falls and Vancouver doesn't necessarily mean that that's the same person that would be interested in coming to Churchill. That being said, people coming to Churchill may be interested in Vancouver and Toronto and, and so on, but not always the other way around. Churchill can be sold as an add-on product, so if someone's going by train across Canada, they can add this very easily. However, we do also find for those people that are amateur or professional photographers or really into the wildlife, they often, even if they've never been to Canada, they will come to Churchill, not because it's Canada, not because it's Manitoba, they're coming specifically um, for, for the polar bears and that's why they're choosing it as their only destination on their trip. So moving forward here, I'll talk about how you get to Churchill. I, I've given this uh, answer away already, but there's two main ways. You can get there by air, so it's a two-hour regional flight. Uh, very easy out of Winnipeg to be able to get up to Churchill, or you can uh, go by rail. Now, if you remember, I, I said there's 100,000 lakes in Manitoba, so laying train tracks from Winnipeg to Churchill is a bit of a challenge, and uh, as a result, it, it actually takes two days to be able to get there, so about 49 hours uh, one way. Normally, people will fly one way, and then they would um, take the train the other way. It is an amazing experience to be able to go by train, to be able to go through the prairies and then through the old mountains and boreal forest up to the tundra and, and uh, see the, the polar bears. Generally, if someone's in a rush, uh, the train isn't an ideal option, though. Now, a great aspect for all of you on the, the call here is Manitoba is is not uh, you know necessarily an easy destination to understand. It's not top of mind, and it's very difficult for clients to be able to book things on their own, which is great for for all of you folks, of course. Um, but one thing that does make it easy is we have Great Canadian Travel and Frontiers North, and they're both Ma both Manitoba-based tour operators. All you need to do is get your client to Winnipeg, and they take care of every aspect of the client's uh, journey. So from uh, you know, guiding and making sure they're on the plane, the right plane, and they, they have proper equipment and, and clothing and so on. Uh, both those companies are excellent at uh, handling your guests. Okay? So moving on to my last uh, section here is why now? Well, you know, there, it's always a good time to be able to come to Manitoba, of course, and I, I did mention the term, and I apologize for using it. It's now a cliche, I, a cliche, I guess, with the, the bucket list, but it, it is really that type of experience. It is a a once-in-a-lifetime ex experience that people are, are going to want to take. Um, you know, the luxury that we've had in Manitoba and especially up in Churchill is that there is a lot of demand for the products. To be, you know, a lot of demand to be able to go and see the polar bears, and there there is uh, only you know such a long season and so much capacity. As much as we still have lots of capacity to fill, but we've never really had to get into you know discounting and doing all those different things. But we do have a number of of very uh, cool new itineraries that have come out this year and we're really trying to uh, you know, create a buzz and, and get some people on these tours uh, even for this fall actually which is why you know, we do have some special incentives for 2011 fall uh, which is you know, starting within the, the next couple of weeks here actually. So I'd encourage you to be able to check out that link at travelmanitoba.com slash polar bears to be able to see some of the different incentives that uh, that are available. There are lots of other products that you can sell from both of these companies, but uh, that, that's a good snapshot of, of the different range of, of in terms of length and price that, uh, that you can sell. So I hope that uh, gives you a good overview of, of some of the special things that we do have to offer in Manitoba, and I'll, I'll turn things back to Terry who can... Uh, you know, mention uh, a couple questions if, if there are any from the field. Great. We have a couple questions from uh, different participants, and so um, could you maybe start off by telling us a bit about the temperature in October and November, Lionel? 
Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a, a great question. Uh, it, it really depends quite a bit, and there is a, is a big variation between Winnipeg and Churchill. But uh, generally in October, winter is, is coming. We normally get our first major snowfall around uh, around Halloween, so the end of October. So the temperature could you know, likely be around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, plus or minus a few degrees. Uh, once you're getting in, in, into later into October, definitely it's going to be dropping, and it could be you know ten or you know twenty or, or ten or even zero degrees Fahrenheit. One thing to keep in mind, though, with the temperature is is two major things are important in in Canada and parts of the U.S. One is you have the temperature, but the second is is the amount of wind. And Churchill is located right on Hudson Bay, which is basically an extension of the Arctic Ocean, so the wind can really be quite a factor, and that can make it uh, feel much colder than it is. Um, that does really add a lot to the experience because of the potential extreme temperatures. The great thing, again, for your guests, especially coming from southern regions, uh, you can actually rent you know, the Canada Goose jackets and ski pants and the big boots and mitts and, and everything. So if someone doesn't have that, those types of types of supplies, they, they can get those in uh, in Churchill. One thing I do want to add, which ties in a little bit with the temperature, is if you do have guests that are really dead set on seeing a, a white polar bear on white snow, the most of our suppliers really do encourage you to to uh, try and and uh, move your clients into booking in November, uh, because that's a, there's a much greater opportunity to be able to see a polar bear on on lots of snow in November than there is in October. As I mentioned, we will get snow in October, but often because of the winds, it can snow, and then we'll just be blown off, uh, blown off the land. So just just one thing to be able to keep in mind, um, and, and that's a good question to ask customers uh, what they're looking for uh, in their pictures. Great. And so another question uh, coming from the questions function in our system: um, What is the optimal length of a good experience? Oh, that's that's a that's an excellent question as well, and and that really depends on your guests. Um, and, and all there, there's pros and cons to short trips and and to long trips. Definitely, uh, you know, a customer probably doesn't need to spend you know five to ten nights up in Churchill, but for a typical customer, if they're anywhere from say a minimum of two nights up to say four nights maximum, that that really gives them a good uh, overview of Churchill and as I mentioned part of the charm of Churchill is just being forced to relax and absorb what the local culture is like so being able to spend a lot of time there is really ideal now that being said you know we all realize that some customers don't want to necessarily take the time to you know experience life in the Arctic all they want to do is they have their checklist and polar bears are on it they want to um, fly into Winnipeg the next morning, get on a plane, do a day trip up to Churchill, see a polar bear, check it off the list, and leave Churchill and be back in Winnipeg that night, and and that's perfectly fine as well. So I, w I would say it's it's more typical for people to spend you know two three nights in in Churchill, but there are definitely uh, customers interested in just the uh, the day tour. I, I should mention also I, I missed this earlier is everyone flying into Winnipeg would have a uh, pre and post night in Winnipeg. So wherever they're coming from, they arrive in Winnipeg overnight and fly to Churchill the next day. And then when they come back, they would overnight again and then head head on home. Yeah, but I hope that answers the questions about the length of time. So again, it really depends on, on what the client's looking for. But day tours are great for some. Longer tours are, are great for the others. You talked a bit about the restaurants and shops in Churchill, but can you give us an idea of other activities to do while in Churchill? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, in October and, and November, keep in mind that really everything is a, a focused on, on the viewing polar bears. For summer, it's quite different. There's even more activities. But uh, in October and November, one of the actually uh, the, the tours that people really enjoy a lot is we do actually have uh, a lot of our itineraries with a dog sledding component. And it's actually called Introduction to Dog Sledding. So it's anywhere from about a two to three hour introduction to, to the dogs. And, uh, people basically are able to meet an, an actual dog musher who is Métis and they hear what the life is like in the Arctic and what Métis people are and, and the life of a, a dog musher. And people are going to see the bears, but this uh, experience is one of people's highlights actually, so it's, it's quite a nice experience. There are, are also uh, helicopter 
uh, opportunities as well where you can take a helicopter to go out and see the uh, polar bears across the region. But remember there's 900 of them so it really gives a, a completely different experience to be in the air and just be able to see the sheer number of polar bears and, and where they're all uh, congregating. And then we also have uh, you know some other you know remote lodges that would be outside of, of Churchill. Um, you also have a lot of Aboriginal experiences which can um, can be delivered. Uh, throughout the itinerary as well. So uh, th th there's some great museums actually, and there there's a lot of other things, but those are some of the, the main things that would be great additions uh, to someone's itinerary. Great. We have time for about one more question, and okay. uh, just note that we, we have tabulated all the different questions that people have asked, and we'll get back to you on them. But Lionel, for the last question, could you give us an idea of what the incentives for this year are. So maybe just a little bit more detail about those incentives. The incentives? Okay. Well, it, it does vary from from uh, product to product and company to company. Uh, just as an example, on the, this first um, package, which is is uh, with Frontiers North uh, at 1199, that's a one-day polar tour where you get a, a $250 credit towards a helicopter ride. Um, or and uh, $250 credit towards an additional stay in Winnipeg, and there's actually a lot of things that can be added on in Winnipeg with city tours and and uh, and other things. And then there's some destination Churchill bucks which can be used uh, at a few of the gift shops. So that, that's an example where there's a few things that if someone chose to add more to their trip, they would get it at a bit of a, a discount. You know, and then uh, with Great Canadian, for example, their first product here at 1665, um, you know, they've got some special prices. Uh, that have already been uh, incorporated into that as an incentive for for uh, for people traveling this fall. So yeah, I really encourage you to look at at all six of these uh, packages. And if you notice, the prices range really from eleven ninety nine up to about fifty five hundred dollars. So there's quite a variation in, in terms of the price and the experience that uh, that people will be getting. Great. Well, coming out of this webinar, we will definitely follow up with everyone whose questions didn't get answered. We'll also send um, some more information on Churchill and Manitoba and, and what you can bring to your clients. Um, I guess on your screen now, I should see for more information, um, feel free to contact uh, Dene or Lionel and their emails and um, phone numbers are right there. Um, and right now, I will draw the, um, the winners of the American Express gift card before we sign off. Okay, the first person we have is Nancy Steele. So Nancy will um, follow up with you to get you that gift card. Um, second, David Epstein. And the third is Yvonne Wolf. All right, and I'll follow up with each of you to get you the gift cards. Um, thank you. But uh, to everyone else on the call and, and to Lionel, uh, thank you so much on behalf of us uh, at Travel Manitoba. Uh, Lionel, do you have any final words for people on the call? Well, I, I just wanted to thank everyone for, for taking the last half hour and investing into in learning about Manitoba. And we do realize, again, that every you know there isn't any trip that's for everybody and that uh, we are, are not necessarily the most known destination but there is absolutely a lot of interest in our, our products that we do offer, and I do guarantee that anyone that you send to Manitoba is going to have uh, an absolutely phenomenal time, and uh, you know you'll, you'll definitely you want to be sending more clients uh, to Manitoba because they'll have a great time. So hope to see your guests here very soon. Thanks again. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.